Hi guys. It's been about a year. So it's probably no surprise that I have had to scale down my yearly Goodreads book goal. It went from 40 to 12, but in October I read a whole three books. It was kind of crazy. And I know that compared to a lot of people on booktube, that's nothing. I see booktubers who are like, I only read six or I only read eight books this month and they feel as though they've let themselves down, as though they let their viewers down. And here I am going, I've read three books, it's crazy! I want to start with a little project I'm doing this winter, and that is to finally read all of the Harry Potter books. Up until now, I've only read the first one. I read it when I was 20, I think, because a co-worker, I had, I had several co-workers at my first job who were rabid Harry Potter fans. They were rabid Harry Potter fans and they got me into watching the movies and I really liked those and so eventually I was like well you know I'll read the first one and I really liked the first book and I always intended to read the rest of the books however I wasn't gonna go out and buy them new I don't I don't buy new books pretty much ever and so I was waiting to read the rest of the Harry Potter books for when I had finally collected all of the books myself and finding them used at good prices is surprisingly difficult, or, or maybe not surprisingly, because who's getting rid of their used Harry Potter books? Like, no one. <laughs> so, um, as of right now, I still don't own all the books. I have, I'm missing three, four, and seven. But yeah, I just said, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna start reading them, and for book three. I, I actually did read book three, but it was at the beginning of November, so it'll be included in next month's um, wrap-up. But for three, four, and seven, I'm going to go ahead and just check them out for my library through the e-reader program. I started off October by rereading Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, and it was interesting. I still laughed. I laughed a lot, and that was, I think, one of the the things that really charmed me the first time I read this book is that it, it's so funny. It's witty and clever and it, it helps carry it along very quickly. Despite the fact that, I gotta say, because I also read, the second thing I read for October is The Chamber of Secrets, which I really like too, but we'll get into that. One thing I noticed reading these, and they're a good comparison because they're both Roughly the same size. This one is about 10,000 words longer than this one. Um, she spends a lot of time on getting Harry to Hogwarts. Like, I think in both of these books, the first... I'm just going to double check real quick. Almost the first 100 pages. So, yeah about the first third of this book and the first probably closer to 25% of this book because this book's longer is spent just getting him to Hogwarts which I never I hadn't noticed I didn't notice it the first time I read it but I definitely noticed it the second time I read it they kind of they kind of have a slow burn at the start I have a lot of things to say about the pacing in Prisoner of Azkaban I'll talk about that more next month when I talk about book three um, but for the most part, these two were very good, and I had a lot of fun. This one, yeah, Chamber of Secrets, was really funny. We'll just take that out. Um, it was really funny and has a really great plot. I feel like a lot of people, and I think I said this in my review on Goodreads, I was kind of like, I always get the impression that this is people's least favorite book. The only thing I struggle with is the end, and maybe that's why people don't like it. Because the problem with this book that I see is that it has a very deus ex machina ending. Spoiler warning. <laughs> As though I need that. As though I need that. Literally everyone has read these books except for me, which is why I'm finally reading them at 27. So the ending is not great. The ending is definitely handed to Harry. It's very like, oh, nice and tidy, wrapped up in a bow, everyone hold on to the phoenix and we'll fly out to the dungeon. But the rest of it, the whole mystery in this is so good. I love it. 
And I love that Hermione figures everything out before everyone else does, and then she gets petrified, and it's just, I love it. Good length. And um, I think there's a lot of stuff that I personally would have cut out of book three. Um, though, of course, I probably would have, I would have just in general rather read book three from Hermione's perspective than Harry's, but, you know, we'll talk, I'll talk about that later. And then, the third thing I read in October was the other rereads. Um, but I hadn't read this since 2011. It's called Monster by Ailey Martinez. I think I talked about this in my top 10 books that have influenced me as a writer. Is just, it's great. It's, I loved it the first time I read it. I loved it the second time I read it. This book is an urban fantasy novel about, so it takes place in a world with all kinds of magic and demons and they're called things called cryptobiologicals which are monsters essentially but lots of different orders of monsters there's angels there's succubi um there's imps various levels of uh intelligence sentience various levels of it's of sentience and the thing about it is there's peep humans can be born and they're humans and they have a physical structure in your brain called the like Merlin lobe I think is what it's called and depending on how developed it is um, means you're either cognizant so you can see supernatural things semi-cog meaning you can see it when it's right in front of you but you're gonna forget it um, and people who are in cogs so they can't their brain just glosses over anything supernatural that happens or that they see or that they encounter. It, the book is about a cognizant who works at um, for animal control, a special division of animal control that deals with cryptobiologicals on the loose. And he captures them and brings them in for a fee. And a girl or a woman who is a semi-cog, so she's working in a, it starts with her working in her grocery store and there are yetis eating the ice cream out of the freezer aisle and and monster is the name of the guy who works for animal control he gets sent to capture the yetis and that's just that's just scratching the surface right but the great thing that this book does is it doesn't spend a lot of time on exposition obviously your your magic system needs rules and it needs structure and it needs limits but don't spend chapters and chapters and chapters explaining to me how it works. This is at school. I'm not reading this as a textbook. Show me how the magic works in the course of the novel. I don't, I really don't need it. And that's why I don't read a lot of magical high fantasy or high fantasy with magic in it because there's a real tendency to over explain everything. And that's why I love this book. It has a magic system. It has a lot of limits. It has technical things about what the way things work and inter interwork together. But he, and he does explain things. And he does have Monster explain things to Judy. Judy's the incog. Um, but it's very brief. And mostly we just, it's like, oh, why are you doing this thing? He's like, well, I'm doing this thing because we gotta get this thing and la la la. Like, he's doing it. And it, it's happening maybe as we get snippets of an explanation. And it just works so much better for me. Pacing is so quick and it's fun. The climax is um, one of those, it's so well written and so fast paced that it feels like you're watching a movie as you're reading it. And I remember, I remember thinking the first time I read this book that this would be a fantastic book to adapt into a, a movie. And I had the exact same thought the second time I read it. And I just, I, I kind of wish someone would do it. On the other hand, there's always that, well, what if they do it badly? And so I'd rather just not have a movie than have a shitty movie. You know what I'm saying? But if someone was gonna adapt an urban fantasy into a movie, my vote would be for this. Cause it's so good and it's so fun. And it's just, darkly satirical. Oh, that was the other thing. Sometimes I, I like to describe the writing. Now, I have not read his other novels, but I like to call him the American Terry Pratchett. He 
he's not as absurd as Terry Pratchett and, and or as funny as Terry Pratchett, but it's that same kind of thing. If you like Discworld and you want an urban fantasy style, check it out. If you've read any of these books, if you've read Monster, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Or if you've read any of Aileen Martinez's other books, because I've only ever had or met one other person who's read him, and I'd love to talk to people about him and his books and his book. Yeah, so talk to you guys later.